Hello from Pennsylvania. Welcome back to Sun. Plus one. And I'm Chris. And I'm Cheryl. And today we're in Northampton. We're at Crytersville Covered Bridge. And we're going to take a look at it and see a little bit of history about it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, this isn't like from the movie Funny Farm, is it? Like termites holding hands? Chris, you're watching too many movies. And when have I ever taken you any place that was unsafe? I don't know. Chris, have a little faith in the craftsmanship of our forefathers. Now you're the one quoting movies. <laughs> All right, let's do this. This is a magnificent, and I do mean magnificent, spot for this bridge. You've got this wonderful gazebo, the flowers, the grass that's manicured, the creek, and then you have this spectacular covered bridge. And I just can't wait. Let's go take a look at it and learn a little history about it. And this bridge was built in 1839. So Theodore Burr was one of America's premier bridge engineers and designer. He is famous for designing and patenting a truss slash arch combination that's used a traditionally framed multiple king post truss to which a segmented timber arch was added. This is known today as the Burr truss. So, Theodore Burr was one of the earliest and most prominent bridge builders in our country. Uh, I believe he was from Connecticut and his career ban uh, began in New York where he built a bridge spanning the Hudson River in 1804. The Burr Arch Truss, as the design became known, used two long arches resting on the abutments on either end that typically sandwiched a multiple king post structure. The bird truss, coupled with a multiple king post design, provides the support structure for all seven of the Lehigh Valley's covered bridges. The arch of the bird truss provided a stronger support than the king post truss and therefore allowed a longer span to be built. So let's go in and take a look at this. First, let's just go take a look right over here at the creek. Okay, let's go take a look at this. Boy, this is so beautiful. And it's so quiet. And you, you, I don't believe you can drive. No, you can't drive cars on here because we couldn't go across it. So looking at this bridge, you can see the arch on either side. And you can see this has multiple king posts. These are these straight posts, and there's multiple ones of them that you can see. And this is a magnificent bridge. And we're just going to walk straight down to the end of it. This is beautiful. Uh, look at that arch. Almost from side to side, almost, in all the king posts along the way. And they even have some lights for nighttime. This is, this is I bet you this is beautiful. I gotta come back at night. This is just gorgeous. Chris, is this termites holding hands? Nope. No, it's beautiful bridge, isn't it? Yep. Extremely safe. Bet you you could drive 18 wheelers on this. You could, but you're not allowed to. No. And another picture from over here. And we're going to go down there and go under the bridge too, but let's get another look at it from this side and then we're going to go walk back through it again. And halfway through this bridge, there's this plaque here uh, saying about the 150th anniversary, September 12th, 1989. 
And I noticed as I was walking through here that this bridge has a slate roof. It actually adds to it uh, the niceness and the authenticness of this bridge because of the slate, I think. So much nicer than just an asphalt roof. And they, on the ground here, it's this cobblestone brick. This is nice. And the stone wall. And more of the creek, which will go down there, but I just can't get enough of this bridge. Chris, this is magnificent. And look at that house right there in the very yeah. end where we were. Yep. Which I don't think you can see it really well now, but you could when we were down there. Mm -hmm. This house, when they're sitting on that porch, they have this to look at. Yeah. They can sit there and have their coffee or their dinner on that porch. And what a beautiful view of this bridge they have. Yeah, they have a good scenery here. And one more quick shot. I'm going to go on the side of where the floor is and on the side of the walls. You can see the, you can see the creek down there in between. And here's the side view of the bridge. And I'm gonna get up and show you the underneath of it. We just climb on this rock. And here's the underside of it, underneath. And the sound you hear, it's all little tiny waterfalls there. So one more look underneath. And I believe, I'm not positive, that this is the Hokandakwa Creek. I'm pretty sure it is. See that house right there? Their whole yard. All they have to do is look at this bridge. That is, I, I can't think of anything more peaceful. And here's some more views. There's a little building over there. There's the gazebo, but first, I don't know what this is or where this goes just around the back, but let's go take a little walk. Oh, it only goes right back to here. And this side. goes back to the creek and listen to the birds. Boy, this bridge feels extremely tranquil. Yeah, you notice that too, huh? Yeah. I mean, it's just, I don't know how to explain it. There are some places that you just have the energy and you can feel just the peaceful energy from it. And this is one of those places. All right, let's go over to the gazebo here. And they got these steps from the parking lot that go down to the gazebo. And there's a nice picnic table on there. Isn't that nice? Yes, that's nice to have a picnic table. Oh, and there's another one right out there. That's undercover right there. They take care of this property and this bridge 
extremely, extremely well. Here's a look at the bridge from the gazebo. Uh -huh. I'm just going to take a 360 turn of this area. And over there, there's a path to take. So we're going to take that path and see where it goes. And I believe that this is the only remaining covered bridge in Northampton County. And like I said, there's this path right here. And Chris is way down there already. And let's go see where this path takes us. The bridge is right here. Then you have the flags. And then there's this little walkway, this little path. But I'm interested in knowing where it goes. Yeah, I'm not sure where this path goes, but we're going to take it. You hear a little traffic from the road. This was great this morning. We got to see a really magnificent covered bridge, and I do mean that's magnificent. And we got to take a little walk, learn a little history about at least this type of bridge and Theodore Burr and now it's we're walking in grass it might go in around in a circle i'm not sure and some wildflowers over there this is wonderful when i was a kid they never had all these nature paths like they do nowadays and it's just i don't i just don't remember this as a kid but nowadays, there are walking paths, there are parks, the state parks. There is just so many places to go, to see, to do. And while you're doing all that, you know what you're doing? You're walking. You're getting your steps in, you're exercising. And most of the time, you're not even realizing it. Because you're having a great time and seeing things. This way, I just think goes spins around and goes back, which we'll have to go to go back. But let's just go take a walk through here. It's through the wildflowers and stuff. Yeah, it doesn't go very far. But you know what? Life is so much better with nature. It just is. And all around this plant, it's all there is is wild bergamot. I mean, there's a few other things, echinaceas and stuff, but look at all of it. It's just everywhere. And the bees absolutely love this stuff. Look at them. There's bees everywhere. But there's a lot of that stuff around here. These purple flowers, wild bergamot. It's just loaded in here with that. And on this side of the path, I see the creek here. Huh. And I see this green hose. Oh, yeah. Here. And the other end of it's in the water. So along with all the wild bergamot, there seems to be a lot of these too. Very pretty. These are called false sunflower. That's one of the more common names for these. But there's a lot of those fall sunflowers and a lot of the wild bergamot peppered in with some echinacea. Chris, yeah. it would be nice to come here at night to see that bridge all lit up. Yep. I might come back. I bet you that would be beautiful all lit up at night. Well, that wasn't a long walk. I'd have to guesstimate maybe a quarter of a mile. But it was a nice peaceful walk. In fact, the guy behind me 
said that he comes here all the time. He doesn't live far from here across the street. And it's just a peaceful walk for him in the morning. Look, and he walks through the covered bridge and he just gets his thoughts together. And that's a great thing that this covered bridge, this little path in the serene setting and the way they maintain it makes people feel like that. We need more of that in this world. We need more things that make you feel happy, not hateful and energized. This is just magnificent, like I said. And I'm so happy I came here and could share it with you. Well, I hope I got everything and covered everything about this bridge. Uh, if I forgot anything about Theodore Burr or learned anything different about this bridge, I'll let you know. In the meantime, we'll be visiting other bridges. And this design is used quite often in a lot of bridges. So we'll be able to see it again along with other designs. Boy, this is a beautiful bridge. Wow. Uh, go towards the light, towards the light. Oh, mom, mom, where'd you go? Where'd you go? Well, we hope that you enjoyed seeing this magnificent covered bridge and learning a little history on it. And you know something? I've always wanted to dance in a bridge. You know, she's about the cutest mom ever. You know, we hope you enjoyed this video and we hope you come along for the next one.